both of my parents are retired professors studying physics, and they had an almost identical career path. They went to the same university, they shared the same advisors, and they were ultimately placed in the same institution after completing their studies. So from a strictly academic perspective, the only difference between my mother and my father seems that my mother used to get better grades than my father, according to my mother. And despite all her accomplishments, however, my mother always felt that her voice was hardly heard. Her ideas were constantly disregarded in meetings, and it gradually eroded away her confidence to speak up in these settings. And eventually, she had to relay her ideas through my father, who received much more attention in these settings. So the lack of inclusion impaired my mom's ability to speak up, to contribute to these conversations. Surprisingly, at the same time, my father also felt excluded. While my mother was not given enough attention in their workplace, she was seen as the authority figure when it came to my own upbringing. My father actually enjoyed doing housework and taking care of me, but others viewed my mother as the figurehead for anything related to me or to our home. So my father also felt excluded for sharing his ideas related to the family. Why am I sharing this? So my parents' story suggests that exclusion can happen anywhere in a wide range of situations. So the next question is, what are the consequences of exclusion? First, zooming out to the general realm of social animals. Like all social mammals, ring-tailed lemurs would exclude one of their members if the animal becomes their burden. Not surprisingly, this animal usually wouldn't survive well. And now shifting back to human beings, recent research has found that the pain of social exclusion is rather similar to the physical pain it activates the same pain center as the real physical pain. And as a business school scholar, I studied the role of inclusion in workplace. Imagine your workplace is a symphony. Each instrument is a team member. What would happen if one of the instruments gets excluded from the rest of the group? <laughs> The answer is chaos. Prior studies have found that not only the excluded individuals would feel unsafe and perform worse, the rest of the group, the whole organization would be less engaged, less creative, and less productive due to a less inclusive culture. So the message is very clear. Exclusion is harmful to not only the individuals, but also the organization. Then the question is, how to tackle exclusion. Here are three solutions. The first solution is to implement formal systems to shape a more inclusive culture. Firms used to use informal ways to shape culture. For instance, supervisors may communicate the values to the employees informally. But now, many organizations start to adopt formal systems to systematically shape their organizational culture. And I refer to this approach as formalizing the informal. For instance, one of the prevalent formal systems to shape culture is something called culture fit measurement system in the employee selection process. It works like this. So the formal system would serve as a values filter for potential employees. It screens and measures and tests whether the candidate would hold a value of inclusion. If the candidate is measured to be inclusive, it passes a test. However, if a candidate is measured to be not inclusive, it fails a test. And in this way, the organization only hires more inclusive employees. I would like to show you the power of the formal system. In one of my studies, I use proprietary data from one organization that aims to manage its organizational culture. And in an effort to hire employees who are more aligned with their organizational values, 
they implement this formal culture fit measurement system in the employee se selection process. Candidates are required to conduct the test and to answer questions about how they would behave under hypothetical scenarios. Here's what I find. So in this figure, x-axis refers to employee tenure, y-axis refers to employee performance. The solid line refers to employees who are selected through the formal system, and the dotted line refers to employees who are not selected through the formal system. And I find that, first, employees who are selected through the formal system perform significantly better than employees who are not selected through the formal system. So the formal system works. More interestingly, I also find that the power of the formal system becomes stronger over time. The difference between the two types of employees' performance increases by around 15 times from day one to the sixth year of their tenure. So this is a magnificent effect. And also, the power of the formal system depends on several conditions. For instance, in this study, I find that the formal system becomes more powerful, more effective when the local culture is already more aligned with the organizational values and when candidates engage in less gaming behaviors. In a follow-up study on this formal system, I also look at whether the formal system would exert a spillover effect on existing employees. Although the formal system was designed to target only at new employees, I find that the formal system also has a positive spillover effect on existing employees, especially when the person of new employees, the person of targets who are selected through the formal system, reaches a critical mass in the office. So both studies suggest that a formal system can not only have direct effect on the new employees, but also may have a spillover effect on the existing employees, amplifying the power of the formal system. The second solution is leadership. Leaders are extremely important in shaping a more inclusive culture. As the psychologist Edgar Schein said, the only thing of real importance that leaders do is to create and manage culture. If you do not manage culture, it manages you. And imagine the symphony again. Without a leader, all the instruments may have different values, different norms, they may now know that the value of inclusion is important. They may now know that inclusion is expected and good for the organization. So a conductor is important. Conductor can deliver the message that inclusion is important, can assign tasks that require more diverse perspectives, and can lead by example to create a more inclusive culture. I would like to show you the power of the leadership. My co-author and I conducted a study that examines the role of CEOs in shaping organizational culture. We analyzed a large sample of employee reviews, and here's what we find. In this figure, x-axis refers to the year relative to the CEO turnover year, and y-axis refers to the change in culture. We find that culture significantly changes after CEO turnover. So it shows that CEOs have a strong influence in shaping culture. And in another study, we look at the role of board of directors in influencing firms' DI outcomes. We find that if board is more diverse, it may have a cascading effect on manager DI outcomes and also on staff DI outcomes. So both studies highlight the power of leadership in shaping a more inclusive culture. The third solution is you, every one of you. Anyone can promote inclusion. You don't have to be a CEO, you don't have to be a board member, and it is actually quite simple. Small gestures would make all the differences. For instance, in one of my recent studies, my co-authors and I examined how executives interact in the earnings conference calls. And we observe some very interesting patterns. Some executives would like to invite their colleagues to respond to analyst questions. And this can be considered as a signal of inclusion because these executives not only answer questions themselves, but also would like to include their colleagues' perspectives and voices. 
And then we study the firm outcomes and also the career outcomes of such inclusive behaviors. Here's what we find. First, we find that executives who initiate more inclusions are associated with higher growth in firm value. So this is a good news for the organization. But more interestingly, we also find that executives who initiate more inclusions are more likely to be promoted to CEOs. So here comes the good news for you. Being inclusive not only benefits the firm outcomes, but also benefits your own career. So now we have three solutions, formal systems, leadership, and you. And I would like to remind everyone that knowing these tools is essential because everyone is vulnerable to exclusion. It is regardless of your gender, race, age, position, et cetera, et cetera, you may perfectly fit into a majority group based on your observable characteristics, but you may still feel on the outside at some point in time. For instance, in my childhood, I always felt a bit uncomfortable and different from my peers due to the fact that I wore glasses. It was not until I started my PhD that I finally, that I finally joined a glasses-wearing majority <laughs> that I began to feel more comfortable with this part of me. So my final words, inclusion matters to everyone, you don't have to be a leader to practice inclusive leadership, and it is actually in your best interest to be inclusive. And with the joint effort of everyone, I hope all workplaces can enjoy a symphony of inclusion. Thank you very much.